Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors 106 to 104 win against the Miami Heat. Riker, the at the beginning of this game it wasn't looking very good for this team, but uh as the game went along, the Raptors somehow pulled this one out. Wild game for the Raptors tonight after the the Christmas little tiny break. They somehow did it, and it was a gross way to get a victory, but mm -hmm. this is my first victory now back after missing watching the Raptors games for quite some time. I'll take it, mm -hmm. right? I'll take yep. a Danny Green game winner. I'll take some scrappy mm -hmm. play down at the end. I'll take a lot of missed calls, a lot of random calls, whatever. Sloppiness, that's it. Got to grind out that win. For sure. It was a wild game. The first half looked very ugly for the Toronto Raptors. Looked a bit lethargic, not really focused. Obviously, Kyle Lowry out tonight as well. The team wasn't really engaged. It looked like they had too much turkey dinner over the break. But, you know, the, the second half, particularly the third quarter, the team really came out firing on all cylinders. And it was really led by Kawhi Leonard and Fred Van Vliet, that, that third quarter stretch. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to see Fred Van Vliet back on form. He was shooting mm -hmm. the three with confidence. Same thing with Danny Green was shooting the three with confidence yeah. this game. And Kawhi Leonard, there was a couple of ISO possessions that I felt like I was watching DeMar DeRozan out there. But really, he's a smart player. He is aggressive, right? He mm -hmm. is very aggressive in getting into the lane. And he was trying to do his work on Justice Winslow and draw fouls. He's a fun player to watch, man. Even an off night for him is still equals 30 points and eight rebounds. Just a good yeah. game for Kawhi Leonard, really. Most definitely, you know, you mentioned it, 30 points, 8 rebounds, 9 of 20 shooting from the field, and the Raptors really couldn't get anything going on offense in the first half. They they finished the first half with 44 points, I believe, so they really needed a boost that third quarter, and Kawhi Leonard took over the game. He, he was exhausted by the end of it. He was getting to the rim. He was relentlessly attacking, and that's what we need. You know, when the shots aren't falling from outside, you attack the paint, and then go, play from the inside out, and then the threes start to fall because... You know, you're driving in, you're making the defense move, and then you see guys like Fred and Danny Green get those threes, and they were hitting them tonight. You mentioned it. Fred splashing them, shooting the ball with confidence. He's been back the past couple weeks, especially with Lowry in and out of the lineup. Fred Van Vliet has really been awesome as the starting point guard for the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, well, you said it. Well, actually, I guess it was somebody else that said it, but having a baby is no excuse for playing bad because while C.J. Mm -hmm. Miles is on his way down, Fred Van Vliet is right back on his way up, and we've mm -hmm. had this age-long age, age long argument, right? Who's the man, DeLon or Fred? And mm -hmm. they both offer something different, but I've been a Fred guy my you know, my entire time in watching him play, and he's just a fun player. He's just a confident player. He shoots those late-game threes. He's willing to step up to the big moments. He did it tonight. Yeah, he hit the he hits the big shots. He's not afraid to take them. And Danny Green is in the same boat. I find it absolutely ridiculous how we somehow fleeced Danny Green over the summer. You know, he had 18 points tonight for us, four for seven from the three point line, six rebounds, some awesome defense at the end of the game on Dwayne Wade, especially when he's trying to hit those crazy clutch shots. But Danny Green, you know, he's always steady. He's always ready to just hit those shots, be confident, and catch the ball within the flow of the offense. And it's awesome to have a guy that's such a consistent 3 and D player. Because, you know, we see it with CJ, an inconsistent guy in that front. And, you know, we've had Damari and all those players. It's great to have a guy that consistently plays at this level. Yeah. Well, if, I mean, if we're talking... Okay, we're t if we're talking two things, right? One, mm -hmm. we're saying, wow, that's some good defense that he played to seal out the game, right? Yeah. How many times have we watched the Raptors lose a game like this yeah. in a you know in a, a last second shot in a buzzer beater against a Dwayne Wade type player or a Jimmy Butler or a LeBron? Right. Yeah. They. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I'm more often than not expecting a loss when it comes down to the <laughs> final seconds and it's a tie or you know it's a, mm -hmm. a, a near tie game situation, right? So it's good. Now we have oh, closers yeah. on defense. We have Kawhi who also had a, you know a crucial stop on a Justice Winslow shot. So we have yeah. guys out there that are going to have a hand up. It's going to be hard to shoot around them. The other thing is, oh, shoot, what was my point going to be? I can't remember, so we'll move on. I'll, I'll say it if I come back yeah. to it. Yeah, to build off what you're saying, Danny Green, you know, because you mentioned it, the Raptors always lose these games, whether it's Bradley Beal. These wing guys always seem to go off against us down the stretch. And, you know, Dwayne Wade, despite the fact he only played, it, it felt like he barely was on the court tonight. It felt like he barely did anything. Then down the stretch, he had that clutch shot to put the – 
the heat up. The Toronto Raptors came back, and Kawhi Leonard immediately took those two points back, and Danny Green and Kawhi are just seasoned veterans playing with full confidence. You know, they, they're championship guys, right? And have those two players ready to know how to deal with late-game situations on both ends of the floor. I, you know, the lack of confidence that I have in the Toronto Raptors in the past, you know, w- whether it's DeMar or Lowry, whoever, great players, but down the stretch, you never have that full confidence. I have that in these players, which is, you know, it's really great to see as a Toronto Raptors fan. Yeah, but despite, okay, this is what I wanted to say. Despite that, right throughout the mm-hmm. game, in the last quarter, at the very least, Justice Winslow and Richardson, I, I mean, they're bigger mm-hmm. guys, of course. And we had Fred Van Vliet out there, and he was a little bit exposed because they were trying to do some switches and get him onto a Yeah, the Heat a had a big man. lineup out there tonight. They did, and it made him look mm-hmm. really good. Like, really, you've said it yourself, Justin w- Winslow is not a bad player, right? He's been, yep. you know, he's had kind of his ups and downs injuries. and injuries and everything. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, I mean, he's not, he's not a bad player and had a great game tonight, right, on paper. Yep. And if you watch him, I think he even played better than what his stats showed. And the other thing yep. I wanted to say is just talking about good players and bad players, right? just because I don't want to be always positive about the Toronto Raptors because uh, it's fun to, you know, just pick Definitely on some, some negatives sometimes. Tonight. But I want to say that I really like the thought of Greg Monroe being a good player, right? Because I, I thought that he was, to be honest, and looking at a couple of the past teams that he's been on. But tonight he sucked. He was bad. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a couple shots in the lane that he just – brick like he just clunked those up against the backboard and i was thinking these are these are not hard layups to make of course he's contested but man this is he's not a great player i would almost rather see chris boucher get some run than greg monroe shooting those dirty shots against oh man i wasn't impressed at all i know greg did hit some shots in the paint he had nine points and three rebounds and did a decenter job you know Jonas is out. Jonas usually owns Hassan Whiteside. It was really rare to see Hassan Whiteside play so well against the Raptors because usually Jonas has the has Hassan's number. And it wasn't until we threw in Greg Monroe that he could kind of we had a guy that can match him physically, you know, his physical size. Now obviously Hassan Whiteside got the best of him when he was guarding him directly, but I think Greg Monroe did a decent job. To back Greg Monroe a little bit, I think he did a decent job at negating some of the because you know Hassan Whiteside was a plus 22 for the game tonight had 16 points and 12 rebounds Greg did a solid job the second half when he got thrown in there from negating some of the impact that Hassan had on the game that's fair but from what I saw mm. I was really had an eye on him he did have a couple bad bad layups yeah and I was <laughs> I didn't know what I was watching man this was some horrible shot selection really um but that's it yeah you it's know, tough like, to shoot yeah it's, it's, it's tough to shoot those over Hassan. And he doesn't play, right? He doesn't get much court yeah. time. So he's excited mm-hmm. when he's out there, I think. Of course, they yeah. want him to be a veteran, and maybe during practice he's teaching the big guys, you know, some some tricks of the trade. But I think when he gets out when he get out when he gets out there, a little bit of a word stumble there, he's excited. Yeah. He wants to get a couple shots up. He's still an NBA guy. He still wants to, you know, get some points on the box score and that's that's where that poor shot selection comes from. Yeah, that's fair. He's he's been a bit better the past month that he's been playing with Jonas out, but had a couple tough layups tonight. The guy that I've been really impressed with the past few games is Norman Powell. You know, not huge box score numbers for him tonight, but made some great decisions. He had five points, three assists, two rebounds, but he's been driving the lane. And the biggest issue with Norman Powell is he attacks kind of recklessly at times, but hasn't been doing that the past few games. No, and the biggest, I mean, the most beautiful possession, I think, of the entire game except for maybe the last play when Danny Green hit that mm. shot, was a full swing around, right? And yep. uh, Norman Powell pump faked, got himself open, hit the shot with confidence. It's one of the late game, one of the late game possessions, and I, I believe it, it brings the Raptors from two down to one up. But mm-hmm. it was just beautiful. It was artistry out there in terms of passing. They, they really swung the ball around perfectly and brought it to Norman Powell in the corner. And to have a guy you know, who's not playing well, hit the shot with confidence. He wasn't shooting well all game. That's all that you need, really. Yeah, for sure. He's making the right decisions, and that's the key. Whether the shots are going in or not, as long as he's making the right decisions, he's a positive on the court, especially with how good his defense is, and he's so explosive. He can, you know, if he can get that shot a bit more consistent on top of good decision-making, I think he could be a a top-tier player. And OG, he was struggling, hitting some shots as well, but played some phenomenal defense in the second half tonight. Yeah, but as it's been mentioned, you know, we really do want him to be a bigger scorer because if we're yeah. looking to build a franchise around this player at some point or perhaps this guy be a critical piece in a franchise that has longevity, we want him to to start to 
be a guy that's in the double digits. Nothing high. Yep. 10 points a game, but not with this big dips from 3 points a game, 0 points per game, to sometimes 12 points, 16, right? He needs to be more yep. consistent. But let's talk about a piece. We'll get into the segments, and we'll start this For time sure. with a little more negative. We'll start with an OGs because one of the big stories of the game, a bit of a question mark, is Kyle Lowry. So you can start us off with perhaps the OGs. Yeah, well, tonight the, the OGs, it's Kyle Lowry because Nick Nurse came out this morning. He said he was excited for – the Raptors to come out and be healthy, you know, aside from Jonas, obviously the team hasn't really been completely together and he was excited to see Lowry come out there and play with Kawhi and they haven't played in a while. And then Kyle Lowry at the start of the game said he was come or a shoot around said, no, my back's a bit hurt. I don't want to play tonight. And wasn't on the bench there tonight. It's been a weird dynamic with Kyle Lowry and Kawhi Leonard. They haven't played on the court together. It seems like in about a month, at least that's what it feels like. What? What are your thoughts on just this whole situation? Well, I'll ask what your thoughts are because you've been you've had your ear closer to the ground here than I have. I, I reckon you're a little bit suspicious of the true you know motives or the reasons that he sat out tonight's game, and I think that a little bit of it, or maybe a lot of it, uh, this is really up for you to comment upon, mm-hmm. is the comments that he made kind of recently about his attitude towards Masai Jerry and uh, you know off season conduct and his opinion of the the team and the franchise and what his role is now. Yeah, and obviously I'm a huge Kyle Lowry fan, so I'm going to, you know, people know that I'm a bit biased and look for the positives in Kyle Lowry, regardless of the personality things that he does, but it's been it's been a bit weird, because he hasn't had mention of this these back issues for a couple weeks, and then out of nowhere, Kawhi Leonard decide, is in the lineup, then Kyle says, I'm out, does what, because usually Kyle Lowry in past years, when he's injured, he's sitting up with the coaches and tries to be the assistant coach. You know, he's always vocal, adamant about leading the team and all those sorts of things, wasn't even on the bench tonight. So it's it's very weird that he's been sitting out the games where Ka- Kawhi has been playing. Maybe it's some weird uh, protest against Kawhi. I, I don't know if it's going to be taken that far. I don't want to make conspiracy theories or anything, but it's, it's hard to not look past the correlation. And I'm kind of disappointed in how Kyle Lowry's back. It, obviously, he's probably injured. He probably wouldn't fake it, but... You know, it's something to look out for as the games continue on this season. Yeah, it's impossible not to be disappointed. And uh, we've mm-hmm. already made this argument. As an athlete, it's hard to criticize a player or a coaching staff for resting a player because you know that these are still humans. This is still yep. a long season. This is still a season mm-hmm. where the regular season is not really important. It's just the playoffs, right? So rest your players yep. because what's the point of risking a long-term in- injury, right? But at yep. that exact same time, we're consumers of an entertainment industry right a game where we're going and paying money to watch these people play and where they're getting paid in Kyle Lowry's case almost 30 million dollars a year to go out there and play yeah. basketball so if if there is this hidden agenda then you know it is like you said it is disappointing it's something that we'll obviously keep our eyes and ears open towards you know more reports and see if it is something that you know, yeah. it's it's the personality conflict and uh, you know mm-hmm. the actual cooperation between partners. But let's bring it back to yeah, a positive it's not, note. It, it's it's not it's not yeah. the rest specifically. Just to close the point, you know, it's not the rest I'm frustrated about. Not not necessarily frustrated, but a bit worried because obviously I'm a huge proponent, like you mentioned, rest is good for players in a long season. But the fact that he's consistently not playing with Kawhi, that's something to look at. And the you fact know, that he something. didn't sit on the bench this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those are two things that are a bit eye-opening but you know we started with the ogs not all plays are the ogs plays in the night and some are some make you say cool why you do them like that you know we're switching up the order a little bit and danny green ended this game with in my opinion the cool why you do them like that play of the night hitting the game winner against the miami hit and the possession before i also want to give an honorable mention to Kawhi's uh to Kawhi's mid-range jumper that really shut the crowd up after Dwayne Wade's big shot. So two of those guys are getting the Kawhi you do them like that from me. Two very exciting plays to close this game. Yep, enough said right there. That's just yeah. fun basketball. Mm-hmm, for sure. And finally, the infamous Damare Carroll Gold Star Award. I don't know if you have anything in mind, Riker, but for me it just has to go to the whole team in the first half. It look, it was pretty bad watching that first half play as a Raptors fan. Yeah. No, that's definitely it, and it was the 2017-2018 Raptors team, that stagnant first uh, first unit, yeah. first half bench that comes out slow, and that's fine. You know what? As long as they don't make a habit and as long as they come away with a victory, it's fine in the short term. But if it becomes a pattern, then it's something to be worried about. Yeah, there's been a couple games that's been like that, so 
as you mentioned, just can't make it a habit or anything like that. But uh, yeah, the Toronto Raptors came out with a very, very exciting win tonight. You know, they finished off strong, beat the and the Heat have been streaking. You know, they've I believe they've won four straight. They're one of the hottest teams in the NBA. So a solid win. You mentioned at the beginning, Justice Winslow had 21 points. Hassan Whiteside had one of his better games. We did it without Jonas. So impressive win for the Toronto Raptors. Yep, and. Before we finish, I just want to comment that those jerseys were flaming tonight. Yeah. My God, they were cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The pink, it was brilliant. It was, uh, you know, almost burned my eyes off when I first started watching the feed, but I guess it's their Vice, their Miami Vice jerseys, and they were pretty mm-hmm. cool, I have to say. I'll yeah. give it to them. I love, designed them. I love that blue and pink color. You know, I mentioned it to you before the podcast. You know, for people that play 2K11, 2K12, and you could create teams, you know, I always made my colors, my team colors, those those blue and pink style. I like how that clashes, whatever. So, if you guys, the, shout out to 2K11, one of the GOAT 2K games. There you go. Yeah, if you can shout that out on a podcast, you know it's a good one. Anyways, you guys are the best for making it this far. Uh, lots of games, fun games coming up. Riker and I are going to be covering them all. So, yeah, shout out to you guys. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. We got a lot of cool stuff coming. If you know, I mentioned it before, Riker and I are back together in Newfoundland. Yeah, you know, we're talking some big things for the Raptors Digest. So yeah, we just keep, met today. Keep your eyes open. We just met today. We we put a couple hour session in, so we actually we have some real changes coming up. So it's fun stuff. Yeah. January first, that's when we're we'll kickstart it all. Yeah, hopefully. Tentative date. <laughs> no, it's set in stone. I said it's it. It's set in stone? The internet okay. knows, and now there's no going back. For sure. Anyways, you guys are the best. We're signing off. Cheers. Cheers.